Uh, so, start na tayong discussion natin. No? So, for chapter number 1, uh, we will be dealing with the basics or fundamental concepts regarding our subject which is statics of rigid bodies. So, ang statics of rigid bodies has this course code which is GESB0313. So, formerly, ang subject natin was known previously as engineering mechanics. So, engineering mechanics is considered as the science that considers the effects of forces upon rigid bodies and is considered or divided into two parts. So, kung titinan natin dito, no? Ang mechanics kasi natin dito is actually uh, uh, divided into two parts. Actually, kung titinan yung configuration, three parts. In this, in this case kasi, meron tayong tinatawag na fluid mechanics. So, in this part, uh, involved yung deformable body mechanics sa rigid body mechanics. Uh, yung dalawang parts na to, involves the presence of solids. So, yung susunod na subject dito sa statics of rigid bodies, which is considered to be uh, mechan mechanics of deformable bodies, again, pre uh, previously known as strength of materials, uh, deals with the effects of forces upon bodies, so in terms of stresses. So, in this case, ano, uh, pinaghiwalay na ngayon yung uh, statics as well as dynamics. Hence, yung engineering mechanics natin ngayon is now known as statics of rigid bodies. So, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng statics? So, statics refers to condition where there is no motion. Tapos, pag sinabi naman natin rigid bodies, so, a body may be a form of structure or a frame. So, meaning, uh, we have bodies that are subjected in a condition where there is no motion. So, fundamental concepts as well as definitions. So, madalas natin gagamitin yung mga terms such as rigid body. So, ano ba yung tinutukoy natin yung rigid body? So, rigid body is considered to be a definite amount of matter. So, normally in the form of solids, the parts of which are fixed relative with respect to one another. So, in this case, ano, in between the two, kukonsider natin tong figure at the right side as an example of a rigid body. So, para masabi natin kasi na isang body is considered to be a rigid body, it would require a great magnitude of force to cause it it's disassembly. Whereas, kung titinan natin yung initial configuration natin dito, meron lamang tayo dito dalawang cylinders that are placed uh, with respect to one another, pwedeng magkaroon ng separation tong dalawa na to, supposedly, mawala yung corresponding walls natin dito at both sides. So, traces of structures as well as frames of machines or equipments are considered to be prime examples of a rigid body. So, yung third illustration natin dito, which is considered to be uh, an example of a simple bridge, is definitely an example of a rigid body. So, another term na madalas natin gagamitin dito is yung tinutukoy natin force. So, force in general is considered to be either push or pull exerted by one body on, on another. So, this interaction can occur when there is direct contact between the bodies. So, possibly, say, for example, a person is pushing on a wall, someone is pulling a trolley bag, or it can occur through a distance when bodies are physically separated. Say, for example, gravity, electricity, magnetism. So, another one is that, pag sinabi natin force, another is that it could cause, it could or could not cause a change in the state of motion of a body. So, kung babalikan natin yung concept ng physics nyo before, do sa may Newton's laws of motion, if we are to refer to the second law of uh, motion, which is the uh, law of acceleration, ang sinasabi doon sa Newton's second law of motion states that uh, objects in a state of motion would continue to rest or objects that move would continue to move at the same speed unless it is acted upon by an unbalanced force. So, meaning... Yung isang bagay daw na hindi gumagalaw ay continuously hindi gagalaw unless merong mat mataas-taas na persa na i-apply doon. Or, yung isang bagay na gumagalaw ay continuously gagalaw sa ganong speed at ganong direction unless magbabago yung force na nag ng kanyang motion. So, another one is that a force is one that actually causes a body to be stressed, stressed out, deformed, and eventually lead into what we call failure it may either be classified either as applied or non-applied forces. So, yung pinaka-most common type of force natin is what we call the so-called weight. So, yung weight naman is always considered to be a downward vertical component of a force. 
So, characteristics of a force, meron tayong tinatawag na scalar as well as vector quantity. Pag sinabi natin scalar quantity, meron lamang siyang corresponding magnitude pero wala siyang corresponding direction. So, such examples include the following. You have length, mass, as well as time. Pero pag sinabi natin vector quantity, it possesses both direction as well as magnitude. So, in this case, examples are so-called force, position, as well as moment. So, the length of the arrow represents the magnitude of the vector. Yung angle daw theta between the vector and a fixed axis as well as the arrowhead defines the direction of its line of action. Another one, meron tayong tinatawag na principle of transmissibility. So, in this case, ano, pag sinabi natin principle of transmissibility, pwede natin i-relocate yung action ng forces natin doon sa kanyang original configuration doon sa kanyang pathway or line of action kasi yun at yun lang din yung magiging kanyang corresponding effect applied versus non-applied forces applied forces, an applied force is very real and noticeable force applied directly to an object so noticeable in the sense that it it uh, its effects in terms of movement, deformation or failure on the part of the object where it is applied is apparent or recognizable. Pag uh, meron naman tayo din tinatawag na non-applied force kusang hindi readily apparent or recognizable yung kanyang corresponding effect such as yung tinutukoy natin gravitational force or what we call simply as weight. Kasi pag ang isang object pinatong natin sa isang particular surface, hindi gagalaw yung object na yun unless mo wala directly yung surface na pinagpapatungan ng pinaka-object itself. So another one is that forces may also be classified either as internal or external type of force. So an external force are forces besides the gravitational force that are applied externally on a given body, object, or structure. So uh, it is actually the reason for the movement, build of stress, deformation, or eventually failure. Then another one, you have the so-called internal force. Ang internal force is what we call the reactive force. So, this is as a result of the application of external forces. So, hindi itong mag-exist unless meron tayong ina-apply na external force. So, tinan natin configuration natin dito. For this particular configuration, meron tayong makikita ang force natin dito. No? Yung 40 pound na force natin dito is an example of an external force. Bakit siya example of external force? Kasi itong force na to is applied externally dito sa mismo pinakabody itself. So, Unless gagawa natin ang corresponding free body diagram, yung figure na to, eventually, wala tayong makikita ang tinatawag na internal force. So, yung internal force na to are what we call reaction. So, eventually, pag ginawa natin yung free body diagram, ipifree natin siya from the so-called support. So, in this case, at D, meron tayong roller. At E, meron tayong pin or hinge. So, pag tinanggal natin yung roller, tinanggal natin yung pin or hinge, ang tendency ng pinakastructure natin would be to fall downward. So, in this case, para ma-hold natin siya currently in its particular place, kinakalampaltan natin siya na tinutukoy nating reactions. At ang reactions na to, in this case, ano, sa roller, merong isa. Sa pin or hinge, meron tayong dalawa. Yung reactions na to are considered to be examples of an internal force. So, ito pa yung corresponding free body diagram natin. Showing further the corresponding internal forces natin dito sa mga respective parts natin. So, mas matututunan nyo to effectively pagdating nyo, pagdating nyo o pagdating natin doon sa concept ng free body diagram. So, this case, ano, uh, meron tayong pin or hinge, meron tayong dito plane surface, meron tayong tinatawag niya uniformly distributed load. Co-convert natin yung uniformly distributed load na 100 pounds per feet na to into what we call a concentrated load. So, mumultiply natin yung 100 pounds per feet na to do sa total span or total length nung pinaka-portion kung saan nag a itong tinutukoy natin yung uniformly distributed load. So, eventually, magiging concentrated load to. So, pagdating dito sa tinutukoy natin plane surface, tatanggalin natin to as well as dito sa pin or hinge. So, in this case, pag tinanggal natin yung corresponding uh, pin or hinge na to, mag-aaroon tayo ng tinatawag na internal force or what we call reactive forces. So, sa case ng pins as well as hinges, dalawang corresponding reaction. Pagdating naman sa plane surface, kamukha ng roller support, isa lamang yung kanyang corresponding reaction. So, ano na ba yung mga possible units ng force? Possible units ng mass. So, possible units ng force, you have Newton, 
yung kilogram is also a possible unit of force as well as possible unit of mass. So, para meron tayong distinction, lalagyan lang natin ng subscript as in kilogram of force. Ah, yung kilogram, magiging kilogram of force as in kg sub F. Yung pounds may also be considered as a unit of force or unit of mass. So, consider natin siya as unit ng force, pounds of force o LBS subscript with a uh, subscript of F. Tapos, meron din tayong tinatawag na dynes. Ang dynes, hindi na natin kinakalang lagyan ng subscript na F or M kasi like yung Newton, yung dynes is an automatic unit na tinutukoy nating force. So, pagdating sa mass, pwede natin siya represent by means of kilogram as well as pounds, pero lalagyan natin subscript na M or Just like in this case, ano, a newton sa kadines is an automatic unit of force. Pagdating naman sa mass, baka magtampo siya, meron din siyang automatic unit, so express in terms of the slug. So, meron corresponding identity siyang newton. Kung babalikan natin yung high school nyo, no? so ang formula kasi ng weight, you have mass multiplied by the gravity. Ang mass, you have kilogram of mass. Ang gravity, you have usually meter in term, uh, meters per second square. So, a newton... Ang corresponding identity niya, you have kilogram of mass, meter per second square. Whereas ang dyne, meron din siyang corresponding identity. So instead na kilogram of mass, you have gram of mass. Instead na meter, you have centimeter. So identity pala ng dyne is you have gram of mass, centimeter per second square. So kilograms as well as pounds may either represent units of the force, in kilogram force, and then pound of force or units of the mass in terms of kilogram of mass as well as pounds of mass. Now, coincidentally, other units such as kips, pag sinabi natin kips, you have kilopounds or 1,000 pounds, and tons may also refer to either mass or weight, as in kips of force, and then kips of mass, or tons of force as well as tons of mass. So, ito yung mga corresponding conversions natin. No? So, conversions natin, for every 1 kilogram of force, you have 2.205 pounds of force, which is equivalent to 9.806 kN. So, for every 1 newton naman, you have an equivalent value of 100,000 lines. 1 kilopounds of force is equivalent to 1,000 pounds of force, or 1 kilopounds of mass is equivalent to 1,000 pounds of mass. So, for every 1 kilogram of mass, you have 2.205 pounds of mass. Notice na nawala dito yung 9.806 kN, kasi yung newton or kN is an automatic unit of the force or that of the weight. And pinag-usapan natin dito, concept ng mass. Then finally, you have one slug is equivalent to 32.174 pounds of mass, which is also equivalent to 14.5915 pounds of mass. So another one, you have the so-called four systems. So four systems natin is any arrangement in space where there are two or more forces acting on the body or a group of related bodies. So ito yung classification ng four systems natin. So basahin ko na lang yung mga corresponding description. Pag sinabi natin coplanar system, is a force system whose lines of action lie in one particular plane. Sa so, lumalabas, two-dimensional figure to, para bagang ito yung pinaka-plane surface natin, nakapatong lamang to. So pag tinignan natin sa, sa isang side, lumalabas, isang straight line lamang siya. Another one is you have the so-called uh, non-coplanar force. is a force system whose lines of action is in more than one particular plane. So yung kanina, you have the so-called coplanar force system. So, two-dimensional view natin dito. Ito naman, pagdating sa non-coplanar force system, three-dimensional yung magiging corresponding view natin. Another one is you have the so-called coplanar collinear co uh, force system. When the lines of action of all forces of a system act along the same line and at the same plane, this force system is called collinear force system. Then, you have the so-called coplanar concurrent force system. So, kaya siya tinatawag na coplanar. Uh, sa isang particular plane lang to, flat lang to, no? Tapos, kasi siya tinatawag na concurrent kasi yung corresponding lines natin dito, meron siyang isang common point. Common point kung saan nag-start or common point kung saan sila nag-meet. So, in this case, ano, common point kung saan sila nag-start before eventually nag-iwahiwalay yung mga corresponding forces. Then, you have also have the so-called non-coplanar concurrent force system. So, lumalabas in this case, more or less, parang three-dimensional view natin dito. Pero still, uh, concurrent. So, sabihin, meron siyang common point. Kung saan nag-start yung uh, mga corresponding forces. O in this case, corresponding tension. So, an example of this particular system is yung tinutukoy natin mga uh, cable supports ng mga towers. So, another one, you have the so-called non-coplanar, non-concurrent force system. 
So kung babasin natin dito no, uh, Nanco planar. So ano yung idea behind dito? Bakit meron tayong tatlong dots dito? So iksabihin nito, hindi nag-intersect itong uh, tatlong vectors natin dito. So iksabihin, para siyang ano, para siyang uh, pickup sticks na nakasabog. So instead na lahat nakalay in horizontal plane, merong iba dito na nakatikwas or lying in an inclined position. Another one, you have the so-called coplanar parallel force system. So, coplanar in the sense na isang uh, common plane, tapos parallel kasi lahat ng forces natin, yung corresponding distance natin from this point up to the other end are said to be equal. Coplanar parallel force system. Another one, you have the so-called coplanar non-parallel force system. So, coplanar in the sense na lumalabas na uh, common yung particular plane and then at the same time, yung corresponding forces natin dito are considered to be non-parallel or not parallel with respect to one another. So, another one, you have the so-called non-coplanar parallel force system. A force system having the lines of action of its forces acting parallel with one another but does not lie on the same plane. So, three-dimensional view. So, ito. So, parallel yung mga corresponding forces natin with respect to one another, pero they do not lie on one particular plane. So, more or less three-dimensional view. So, naman yung tinutukoy nating non-coplanar, non-parallel force system. So, hindi lang siya isang common plane at yung mga corresponding forces natin dito are considered to be non-parallel with respect to one another. Then, last one, you have the so-called force couple system. Force system consisting of a pair of equal coplanar oppositely directed parallel forces but are not collinear. So in this case, ano, two-dimensional yung corresponding view. So susunod natin discussion. So separate yung video tutorial na ito. Ito yung tinutukoy natin free body diagrams.